My name is Daniel Roy, and today I'm going to teach you what I wish I had known when I started out in magic. Over the years, I've gained a number of insights that would have been really helpful to know when I started practicing. These are little gems that would have made my journey through magic a lot more seamless. Now, some of these have to do with becoming a better technician and becoming better at practicing. Others have to do with becoming a better performer, becoming more comfortable on stage and dealing with nerves, and others are just little pieces of advice that I think will aid you along your journey. So these are 13 gems that I wish I had known when I started out in magic. The first is that you really want to practice things slowly. Imagine your hands are submerged in a pot of honey. Practice slowly, paying close attention to exactly how your fingers are moving and how your hands are moving, then slowly ramp up from there. And if you notice bad habits start to creep in, slow right back down, fix the problem, and then ramp back up again. You also need to practice in front of a mirror or with a video camera or using the helpful eye of a friend. You need to make sure that these techniques look good from the audience's perspective, not just from your own perspective. There's no substitute for performing for other people. It's really important that you perform for your friends or your family or your family's friends or your friend's families. Find people who you can perform for. Obviously, don't shove magic down their throats, but do try to find people to perform for, and that performing experience will start to get you to feel comfortable in front of other people. It's helpful to try to decide what you're going to say before you actually perform. When you're starting out, you don't necessarily have to write a full script. However, as you get better, you may want to start writing scripts and memorizing them and then using those scripts in your performances. This frees up your mind to be more present and to interact with the audience. It's very helpful to record your performances and watch them back later. This helps you learn from your mistakes because after a show, it can be very difficult to remember exactly what happened, and the recording really solves that problem. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is you should always take the words of magicians with grains of salt, many grains of salt. Now, this is a little strange because, of course, I'm a magician telling you this. The reason is we magicians have a strange sense of how magic works because we know all the secrets, or most of them anyway. So when we watch a magic trick, we don't experience it the same way that a lay audience does. You want to do everything you possibly can to listen to what your lay audience, what your real audiences say. What they say is far more important than anything you hear from a magician. And if someone audience member makes some criticism, even if it sounds really weird, you need to take it seriously. And if you hear the same issue come up twice with two independent audience members, you must address it. The goal of magic is not just to fool magicians or fool yourself, it's to entertain and amaze audiences. So really pay attention to how they react to a trick. Did they seem amazed or were they confused? Did someone see how you did the trick? What did they say after the show? If you can talk to them and get some of their feedback, that's great. Or if you can listen to people as they're having a conversation about the show, that's also super helpful as well. You want constant feedback. That feedback can come from a mirror or a video camera or a friend or from your live audiences. But the only way you can course correct is by getting this feedback. So anything you can do to get more and more of this feedback in general is better and you'll improve much more quickly. Understand that magic is a craft and an art, just like anything else. You're not going to learn to be a great violinist or a great guitar player or a great dancer in a day. These things take time, and magic takes just as much time as anything else does. So really give yourself the time and the freedom to practice, and practice consistently. You don't have to practice for 10 hours a day. If you practice for just 30 to 60 minutes every day, and you keep this up over a year, two years, three years, you'll be a really incredible magician. And even on days when you don't feel like practicing, just try to practice for five minutes. There's a great phrase that I've heard, which is zero is zero. In other words, if you make no progress on something today, well, you've made no progress. But even if you make the tiniest bit of progress, progress is an additive. It compounds over time. And when we make habits, what matters the most is to set the bar really low, so low that you basically couldn't help but do that habit each day. So even if your goal is to practice magic for an hour a day, just make a habit of taking out the deck of cards and holding it in your hand for five seconds. So on a super busy day when everything is going nuts in your life, just take out the cards and hold them in your hand for five seconds and put them away. You've done your practicing. But most of the time, 
time, you'll keep practicing and you'll keep working on stuff and you'll work on moves and you'll work on your tricks and your presentations and you'll find that you make a lot of progress. Now, while it can be fun to perform because it feels great to fool people, remember, that's not why you're doing this, or at least it shouldn't be why you're doing this. Performing magic isn't about saying, ha ha, I got you. It's about sharing an experience of wonder with your audience. Now, there are lots of ways to do this. Some of them can involve entertaining but playful conflict. Others can be very collaborative and communal in nature. There are lots of ways to achieve this shared experience of wonder, but always remember that that type of connection is the goal. It's never supposed to be a, ha ha, I got you, I'm better than you, I win, you lose. There can certainly be scenarios where there's some pretense or joke about that, or there's a context in which that's appropriate, but that's never the real meta goal of any performance, and it's important that your audience realizes that. Another really important point is please treat your audiences with respect. When an audience member comes up on stage, it's not your job to embarrass them or make them look bad. It's your job to make them look good and help them have a good time. Just treat your audience members as if they're real people, because they are, and treat them with respect, not like props. You may be really nervous when you perform magic for the first time. You may find that your hands are shaking or you can't remember what you're gonna say. The way to get around this is two things. One, practice, and two, confidence. And of course, confidence just comes from practice. You want the trick to be so well practiced that you can almost do it without thinking. You want the presentation to be so well rehearsed that you can almost do it without thinking. You wanna feel so confident going into the show that you know that you could handle any situation possible and that you're totally ready to go. That confidence will free up your mind to be present in the moment. It will let you interact with your audience members, really actually listen to what they say so that you can respond in the moment. Because that's really what magic is about. It's the interaction between you and the audience and the interaction between the audience members and themselves. And being present and in the moment and being really able to actually listen to what they say and actually respond to it and actually engage with them is far more important than the magic ever will be. So those are the things that I really wish I knew when I started out practicing. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel or following me on social media. If you're interested in taking private lessons, I teach magicians of all levels, or if you want to book a show, you can contact me by email or on my website. Links are in the description. See you next time.